Kenny Santucci here with the Fit Aid Show. Got my main man Aaron helping me out for this one. Yo, yo. And we got Mike Fletso. Hello. I don't, I don't even know what introduction to give you, bro. I mean, you're like life coach, life guru, barbell guru, business the shaman. guru. Shaman. The shaman. Yeah. The shaman. <laughs> <laughs> what? So what do you got going on, Mike? Tell us a little bit. Uh, main focus right now is actually helping CrossFit box owners. Yeah. yeah, so we recognize there's a lot of people who are struggling. You know, it's easy to open a CrossFit gym. It doesn't ta take a ton of money. Yeah. And a lot of times people think that all it's gonna take is the love of CrossFit to make it work, which makes up just a fraction of what it takes to run a successful business. And so, uh, yeah, I got Marcus here, and we figured out some things about how to run a CrossFit box successfully. And we want to spread that that good word and teach people how to do that, and then also create tools for box owners to make it where the business stuff becomes very easy, and then they can focus on coaching or doing what it is they really open the gym to do. So, what do you see as the most common mistake that you see people making? Uh, they, I would say the most common mistake is uh, people who open up a CrossFit box. The first thing is they don't they don't recognize it as a business, and if they do, they think there's the business side over here, and then there's the training site over here and it's all one system and i think if you're dividing it in your mind you're already at a loss so that'd be maybe the first thing the other thing is most um box owners and coaches don't value their services enough and yeah. so they're afraid to charge a certain amount of money um yeah there's a lot of reasons why that might be but it's very common they're not charging enough they don't do contracts we had bedros you know. on uh you know owner yeah. uh, founder of fitbody boot camp and you know he was saying the same thing it's not uh, unique to CrossFit gym owners, it, you know, trainers of all backgrounds, yeah, yeah. you know, get into it because they're very passionate about physical fitness. They want to change people's lives, yet they don't know shit about how to run a business. And unfortunately, you could be a really good marketer, a good businessman, and, and a crappy technician and still do well. And I know that frustrates a lot of people. What do you guys think about that? You know, kind of really marrying uh, the, the passion that al almost everybody in our profession has or in this industry, but you know, they need that other essential piece. Well, the, I, I think the, the biggest opportunity is seeing that if you take that same passion and apply it to the business side, you'll understand that that's actually what was going to allow you to do what you're so passionate about because without the business being healthy and being built on like sound fundamentals and, and enabling you to be able to go and do what you're so passionate about, you're just gonna run yourself in the ground trying to do them both inefficiently and so what is work. logic like give us a little background um you know obviously if, if you're listening to this you probably recognize mike's voice the the host of barbell shrugged and barbell business one of the top uh podcasts in into the fitness industry um you know what qualifies you guys to Not give business bad. advice uh number one and 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 and, and how tell us a little bit about the program what what would i be signing up for when i sign up for logic you know, we've both built successful boxes. We've consulted on and helped other people's, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of boxes all over the world, all different shapes and sizes, build their boxes and find that success. Um, and that's really what built this is, is there was just a, a raw need because it was just a mark that is so badly underserved when it comes to the support on the business side. You've got all these people who are super passionate about making this impact in their community and they, they're missing a critical piece of the puzzle to actually be able to do so sustainably. So what happens is that they just kind of like power it out the hard way in the old fashioned way, thinking that that's gonna be sustainable, but they just then burn themselves out and now you've got someone who could have made a huge impact out of the game because they didn't like stop and like get their shit in order before. So and I, so- I consider myself a little bit of a realist and uh, I feel that sometimes <laughs> you run into a lot of people who really either like the sport or you know, they're really good at it, mm -hmm. um, who in my, personal opinion, I don't think should be business owners. You know, you get a lot of people who jumped into the fitness world within the last three to five years, who opened up gyms, and frankly, like, just thought it'd be a quick money maker. And then they realized the hard way that they're not business owners, that they don't really have a care for the business. How many of those people do you run into who are like, hey, I got this failing thing, what, what's my next move? 
Well, we, we do get quite a few people nowadays, especially as the market is kind of like consolidating a, a little bit, it's maturing, right? So it's you have to actually now like step up to bat to in, in order to be able to compete. And so we do get quite a few people who are reaching out kind of looking for silver bullets and we don't do silver bullets. It's all built on like sound fundamentals, but there are a lot of people who are like kind of like in that bad spot who we can help like dramatically. So we do get plenty of people who are out there who are trying really hard. They, they are, they are destined to be successful business owners and they just don't have the equipment yet. And that's so, all. So we have a lot of people who are business owners and box owners uh, out there watching. And my thing is, as being a former box owner, <clears throat> when you're saying, all right, you got to charge a certain premium, but you got to keep the roof overhead and you got a family and all this sure. stuff. What do you say to them when they're like struggling? They're like, I, I can't get people in the door. What, what's my move? There's if they're struggling to get people in the door, usually um, getting people in the door is not the first problem. So when, like I was talking about before, the main thing is people aren't charging enough. And so, uh, and you were also talking about how uh, a lot of people, maybe they don't belong, they're not supposed to be business owners. Yeah. And then they like fell into it somehow and they feel, that's how they feel. Like I somehow fell into this, yeah. which happens. And um, I think, what you have to do is I just run people through like a reverse money map. It's like, how much money do you want to make? How much money do you want your coaches to be able to make? What do you want to be able to pay them? What's your fixed cost look like? Let's look at what it costs just to run your business for a year and make the money you want to make. And then we go, okay, you're going to have 150 members in your gym. Let's divide that, that number by 150 and find out how much money you need to be making per member. And most of the time, it ranges between 150 and $250 a month per member is what they have to make. And most of them are charging 110, 120, 130 bucks a month. And they're not even making enough money to be able to do, like they're not even set up for success. Even if they hit the membership number, they really want that 200 members and they're still gonna be struggling. They're gonna be wondering why. And it, and it all goes back to like, are they even valuing themselves in the right place? And then if you have that part of the equation worked out, I know how much money I need to make per member and I'm, and I'm running the business side by the numbers. I'm still having a hard time getting people in. It's just, pure and simple marketing and most people don't want to even approach marketing because they got a bad taste in their mouth at some point about it they somebody sold them something they didn't want and it was a pushy sales uh experience and then they they get just icky about that process altogether and so uh, what i find is people need to associate themselves and as an entrepreneur and so uh, if you're going to associate as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, um, instead of just saying, oh, this is the thing I have to do to make this work, but if you can fully embrace it, and then within that, fully embrace every aspect of business and treat it equally and give it the same amount of love, like most people don't, who are coaches, don't necessarily want to give a lot of love to the finance or accounting side of the house, right? But um, a big shift that happened for me that allowed me to be a more successful businessman is that I, I shifted to uh, wanting to be proud of every aspect of my business, even if it was not the sexy parts. You know, my sales process, I want to be like proud of how that's done, the marketing, the accounting, the just how our meetings are run. You know, all these things that people don't consider, uh, one of the big shifts for me is I want to be proud of every single aspect of my business. Once that happened, then I started putting effort and focus in aspects of my business. And then everything, what I find is I have this team of people that now because I, my focus is there, my team of people can just do things creatively and create really awesome customer experiences that would not have happened otherwise. As How do you guys person? coach people through the, the mental hang up? Because you say, look, I'm charging 100 bucks a month. If I was charging 200, a lot of my problems go away. But the, the reason why they're not charging 200 to begin with is because they don't value their own services at a $200 level. They value right. them at a $100 level. It's very uncomfortable for them to close that gap. So how do you deal with that as kind of business coaches? Um, you know, a lot of times it's case by case. You know, I, I get talking to somebody and what may be someone else's hang up isn't the hang up for somebody else. You know, um, either, you know, common hang ups might be they, like I had this happen is, uh, in my early 20s, I was sold a gym membership and it was done in a very sleazy way. And so then I had this bad taste in my mouth and I had to uh, have the awareness that I had a bad sales experience, not a good one. And then I had to make the choice that I'm going to ha have a good sales process and that I'm going to be able to sell at a certain price. Uh, I, you know, 
especially in American culture, we're not taught um, that monetary value and the value that you want to have in your life is the same thing. And we're not taught how to manage money and the, the whole, we're not being taught economics at all. Like people are being taught advanced algebra, which they'll never use again, but they're not taught economics, like just basic shit. Good point. And it's really frustrating, but it, it also creates this huge opportunity for us who do have a handle on that side of the house to be able to help people. But yeah, most people don't value their own thing because they would have a hard time paying for it themselves. I was talking with a couple just last week. I was doing a, a, a phone call and they were new to the gym uh, business and they were wanting to know about how they should invest some of the money they're making. Should we invest in marketing? Should we invest in personal development? And and usually people are working through money issues. It's a personal development issue. You know, there's a there's a hang up. They, they were raised a certain way. They have culture, society, their family. They have all these stories dragging them down. And so, and we all are at any time and ha trying to shed that. The more you can shed those stories, the freer you can be to I mean, do what it is you're really supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, I mean, and you said, you know, they, you said something very profound. They would have a problem paying yeah. for it themselves. So, uh, yeah. I would suggest, well, what happened was I'm, I'm talking to these people and I and I got them to accept that they needed to charge around $200 a month. Right. And then 15 minutes later in the call, they're probably watching this. 15 minutes later in the call, they're like, we were talking about investing in a program to help them with having more, you know, a better mindset, right? right. Improve the mindset. And and uh, there was a couple and she was like, but it's 200 bucks a month. You're and like, go, hello. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Well, ask, if you, yeah. if, if you, two things. How are you going to ask somebody for 200 bucks a month if, if you're you not can't spend it, it yourself? Yeah. And how are you going to spend it yourself if you can't even ask for it? Like it's a, it's a, it's a, you're, they're kind of a vicious cycle of being cheap. And that's why high end coaching programs can be so powerful because just writing the initial check and going, okay, this is way out of my comfort zone, but I have faith and I'm going to do it anyway. That's like step one towards recovery of going, yeah. well, I just paid somebody a shitload of money. So, and I've gotten knowledge for that and I'm okay with that. Hey, what I'm offering my skill set is better than anybody else's in town. I have an obligation to be charging a premium as well. And and it all comes down to people fear change. Yeah. They they don't want to change themselves because they're afraid their friends might judge them or this and that. You know, I've gone through uh, a, I don't know. We we've known each other for a few years now. I've gone through a lot of change in a very short period of time. And a lot of people who I used to hang out with, it does make them uncomfortable. And I just have to be okay with that. And I think a lot of people are afraid of changing their own life. But the thing they're really fearing is the judgment of others. Is like, if I change, my parents won't like me as much. The same reason where uh, people get hung up on fat loss. You know, uh, I run into people all the time and they're overweight. And I'm helping them with getting over being overweight. And I come to find out that the real issue is, is their parents are overweight. They've always been overweight. And they're deep down, they're actually afraid that their parents won't love them as much if they thin out. And because now they identify with Kenny, them. you were a fat and, kid where your parents so overweight? The, the same thing happens with money and business. People yeah. are afraid that because my friends don't understand business and probably sit around talking shit about businesses. Yeah. And then, and then, oh, I don't want to be the business owner who makes good money that people talk shit about now. I, I want that. And, and I want everybody, <laughs> yeah, I want everybody to talk, about, talk shit about how filthy rich I am. <laughs> yeah, one and, day. Yeah, and, one day. And just a I second, what, what you're saying around. with that. Those, those associations, a lot of gym owners really struggle with being able to charge accordingly is because they have this identity as a box owner that's based on all these kind of false principles around like sales and marketing and what's good and what's bad and what's acceptable and what's legit and what makes me have sold out or be corny or salesy. And they don't realize that these are all just like, that is actually the norm to like have these fundamentals in place. But in our industry, because of how it started and because of how young it is, a lot of people have this identity that's false and built on all these like bad and kind of untrue isms. And, um, but they, they're, they're stuck with that identity and they don't want to let go. So it's oftentimes breaking that down and whether it's doing like a reverse money map exercise with somebody or it's just, Go, walking through what they actually are doing for people in their lives and it's like you don't sell gym memberships you change people's fucking lives yeah. Yeah. like yeah. put that into perspective you yeah. can't continue doing that what's the bigger picture right? I, I, me and Mike have talked about this before I, said, uh, I read a book 
about a year and a half ago, uh, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. And one of the best things I took out of that book was one line. And it was, think about how many things you do on a daily basis that you don't do because you're afraid of what someone's going to say about it. Yeah. You know, what you wear, how you act, what you eat. You know, we're all so afraid of doing something because we're afraid of that judgment. And if you get rid of that idea in your head, you'll do so many things that are more beneficial for you. Yeah, and going back to the reverse money map, a lot, I've also run into instances where people, we get to, to reach their goals, it's like, oh, the average member needs to be paying 185 bucks a month. And they're like, well, I can't do that. I was like, well, you should definitely sell your business as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> because you're just torturing yourself at this yeah. point. You're not gonna get what you want. Just ignoring the facts is not gonna like make it better. Yeah. You're just gonna keep waking up, not reaching this goal, which you have set no behavior changes to get to. Like, it's, you're dreaming. That's a that's a so, great a great little exercise for everybody to do at home. If you're if you're a gym owner, do the the reverse money math exercise right away. Figure out what kind of life do you want to live. How much income is that going to require? What do you want to pay your co coaches? What's your overhead? What's your average uh, number of members? And, and do the math. And knowing what the math is, you know either you can't blame it on ignorance anymore. And when you think about it, if you have enough members and yeah, they, you have the loyal following and they believe in you and they believe in that gym. And you're like, hey man, we're gonna raise the uh, price of, you know, membership five bucks or six bucks. Nobody's gonna leave because you raised it a couple of bucks. Yeah, I mean, we usually, I mean, I know I advise most times just to grandfather people in. Yeah. And there's usually a greater attrition of your current membership than you're willing to admit. Yeah. So usually what happens is they'll raise the prices and then they'll notice that a year later, like the average value of the each member goes up because you're losing, you know, five or ten people a month. You're bringing in you know, 10, 15 people a month. And over time, you can make more money with fewer members. What? Yeah. And then Let's back up a little bit. More value. I'm a, I'm a gym owner. I like what you guys have to say. I'm interested in logic. What is logic exactly? How do I find out more about it? How do I get on the phone with you and go through this reverse I'll money Marcus, math exercise? I'll let Marcus answer How the, do you uh, pick logic the brains thing. of these two gentlemen? <laughs> um, so, well, Barbara Logic is basically like a business optimization and automation platform. So what we do is kind of part consulting and part technology in that we start from the consulting side to understand really who you are, where you're trying to go, what kind of business are you trying to run. And then once we have a clear understanding of like the, pla the path, now then we go through and we build the system, which is part website and part automation campaigns um, around that business model. So you can actually now implement the machine that is going to support the vision that you're trying to get to. What do you mean by campaigns? So I, mean, I know what you mean. But. Part of the system is built through Infusionsoft, which is the number one small business automation platform. And what we've done is we've built something pretty unique in that we've taken an entire client life cycle within the CrossFit um, like business from like pre, like as they're in the marketing funnel, through the sales process, onboarding, membership, and years into membership, and basically mapped out on best principles based on the tens of thousands of hours we spent consulting with these gyms now over the years, over the last decade. And the end result is more members that stay, pay, refer, that are paying a premium, they're valuing yeah. their services, take a lot of that stress that most of the, the coaches and owners didn't get into the business because they wanted to be business owners. Again, coming back to the beginning, they got into the business because they're passionate about coaching and training yeah. and taking that off their plate. Say, look, it's not within your unique ability anyway. Let us handle it for you. Yeah. You're going to and, and focus on what you're good at. And, and we structure it in a way to where it's it's pretty like dummy proof from the gym owner standpoint, because we understand that most of the people in the industry don't necessarily have a background in this or desire to even like go as deep as you would need to in order to be effective with these kinds of tools. So we've made it super easy to use and it's a totally done for you platform, whether it's the build out, the support ongoing, so all that. now you guys, you guys have built this platform. Does it is it good across all demographics, no matter where the gym is, no matter? It's it's irrelevant where you're at. If they speak English where you're at, then yeah. this will fit and as now, of now. We'll get you, translation soon. Do you, uh, how often do you consider uh, or implement the idea of human error? There's plenty of gym owners out there I love. I've been to well over 100 boxes in the last five years, mm -hmm. and I meet a lot of great owners and stuff. Sure. And then you meet the couple of fucking idiots. <laughs> How many times do you really like, you're like, oh, I gotta, I gotta, you know, work in the fact that this guy might be a little bit of a moron. Well, I'll be honest with you, man. Like <laughs> during, during the initial, like, um, kind of sales process for us, yeah. like we do a bit of qualifying too. We don't need to work with everybody. Yeah. We choose who we want to work with too, because it's important. We really invest in the gyms that we're 
like basically partnering Another with. key take home for any gym owner, you don't have to accept everybody that comes through your door. Uh -huh. If you're not firing at least a couple people per month, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, we get, I mean, we have, you know, we're booked three weeks out for a discovery session sometimes with the, with the volume of, of interest that comes in. I believe it. And we will turn turn people down if it's not a good fit. We'll have a conversation. That's the whole point. It's more of kind of an interview process of like, hey, where are you at with your business? What's important to you? Where are you trying to go? And as long as the, like, the core values are there, we can help with all the other stuff. So if you have no business background, whether you're just get your opening in three months from now and you need help just jump starting it, like, we can do all of that. Doesn't That's not the point. The point is more so a matter of where your headspace is at in regards to I'm committing to do something, doing something special in my community and I'm not going to stop until I get there. The goal, we can turn that into magic. The goal has to be righteous, no matter what business yeah. you're going into. And then the rest is Which is magical because if you combine the marketing and, and the business structure with true leadership and passion and excellence at, at the art of in this case, you know, coaching and personal training, that's where it's magical. If you get a, if you get somebody and you can teach them the business, but they're a shitty coach, there's no band-aid for a shitty coach. If you're not gonna be excellent at your craft, go do something else. You're doing everybody a disservice by yeah. staying in the profession. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, it's an enablement tool. Real quick, what's going on with Barbell Shrugged? What is going Lots, on with Barbell Shrugged? Everybody wants to know. I don't know, what's going on with Barbell Shrugged? Barbell Shrugged is rocking and rolling. Yeah, we got. We don't see your face on it as I much know. as we used to. I mean, I, I, this I, I, voice. I everyone misses game. this voice. You're not there. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we've got two guys. Well, several guys on the show right now, and I think they're going to be doing a better job than I could ever do. To be really? honest, yeah. And that's the truth. Be, be, and a big part of oh, it is, is I've been doing. I did it for so long, and I talked about training within the CrossFit, uh, you know, realm for a long time, and I and I. I could be recycling some information. I mean, I've got over 200 episodes uh, that are an hour long talking about training. And so I think that we can bring in younger, fresher blood. They're going and doing all the traveling that I just can't keep up anymore. And so honestly, over time. So you've been retired on a yacht is what you're saying. Nah, not quite on a yacht, <laughs> uh, but I'm focusing my energy a little bit elsewhere. And these guys are taking over. and. They're hyper focused on a lot of things. Uh, one of the reasons I think it's going to end up being better in the long term is when I was doing the show all the time, I was also managing a lot of other things where these guys have a little less to manage. And so they're gonna, the their, their bandwidth is a little more focused on just making the show as good as possible. And I think we're about 20 episodes in with the newer crew. And if you look at my 20th episode compared to their 20th episode, they're way fucking better. So, give it a year, give it they a had two some good years. Teachers. Like this, this is about, this is more of a long-term play in order to provide a high-quality show where people can keep learning over a longer period of time. People are gonna get tired of me. It's gonna happen. I know some people didn't get tired of me yet, but I don't know. I'm not dead, I'll, I'll come back, do some other stuff. You gotta make that guest appear. I, I might come back and start running the show again, who knows? Well, well listen, guys, congrats on all the success. You guys have been big friends. Uh, friends of the company and personal friends for a long time and we appreciate the relationship and, and always where, wish you the best. Where could everybody at home follow up with you guys if they want to know a little bit more about Barbell Shrugs, Barbell Business, Barbell yeah, Logic, what you guys are doing if they want to reach out to you? Yeah, barbellshrug.com, uh, especially if you're an athlete or a coach, barbellshrug.com you're going to find. It's an amazing resource for anything you might need to be better at what you want to be better at. Barbellbusiness.com. That's gonna be for the box owner. If you're a box owner or anyone who's really interested in business in the in the fitness space, that's an, uh, an awesome resource, lots of podcasts there. And if you're interested in the software specifically, it's sales and marketing automation, the Barbell Logic tool that Marcus was talking about, you can, go, you can find that at barbellbusiness.com or barbelllogic.com. Yeah, cool. Marcus, Mike, as always, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for watching and we'll be back in a little bit.